Hey guys, Man here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be modifying the contents of a couple more macOS apps. Today, these are going to be Super Hexagon, The Impossible Game from Steam, and Stump Mania Reloaded to give you guys an update on how my experiments with that game are going. So let's begin by opening and playing the game. It opens in full screen by default, and as you can see, it's pretty slow. At least on the Mac Mini I'm using. However, we can change to windowed mode in the game's options. Will this help? Let's find out. Again. Yep, that does seem to help. Okay, now let's see if we can change the size of the window. So, when I try and drag the corner, the window moves up and down, but not left or right. That's pretty interesting. And yet, it certainly doesn't stop there. Let's check out the game's contents. In my last app modifications video, I found that V, how are you supposed to pronounce that, was actually a Flash game. I feel like the same might hold true for this game, so let's find out. It's not. Shocker. And it's kind of disappointing that I can't make the window super small. But I can modify the game. For instance, I can mess with this font. I was curious to see what would happen if I replaced it with another font. So I did that with a font called Zapfino. There's also a music folder, and inside of it are six DAT files. What are DAT files? A DAT file is a generic data file created by a specific application. It may contain data in binary or text format. DAT files are typically accessed by only by the application that created them. Many programs create, open, or reference DAT files. So apparently they're also used to store music? Well, in any case, Let's swap the names of music 0 and music 1. There's also these waveform files in this sounds folder used for voices and various sound effects. Finally, let's start the game and see what happens. Welcome to Super Hexagon Zapfino Edition. Although, these overlapping sentences look pretty weird. These sentences also overlap. There's no music in the hexagon stage? Then why didn't the music that normally plays here play in the menu? Because it's Mine. not meant to, apparently. Also, music 0 is 13 kilobytes in size, while the rest of them seem to be way larger. Wait, didn't something like this just happen in Stump Mania Reloaded? Anyways, what I'm doing next is swapping music 1 with music 4 and seeing what happens when I start the game. Again. It's a safe bet to conclude that Music 0 is the menu screen, Music 1 through 3 are the stages, and Music 4 and 5 Fine. are the ending and credits. Now onto a game called The Impossible Game. This is a Steam game, and in Constant's Resources Res, we can find a bunch of images. In one of these images, there's five vertical gradients. What the game does with them is it clones them, lines them up in a row, and uses that as the background in the levels. So let's make this blue vertical gradient all black. I'll also color the orange square character all black. And then I'm coloring the edges white so that we can see it properly. Now it's time for some gameplay as usual. Yep, this is as minimalist as you can get. And of course, the same thing happens in the original level. However, in the other levels, the game uses the other gradients, but not at first. By the way, I just want to quickly update you guys on the App Store version of the game, in more elaborate rooms like this one, the game is simply unplayable in the smallest window possible. Which makes me wonder what this room would look like. Yep, just as I thought. That is simply unplayable. 
Now, to update you guys on Stunt Mania Reloaded. Last time I hacked this game, I found that starting the Atlantis level after swapping it for another level in the game disabled the collision in the level and caused you to fall right through the world and out of bounds. But this has been brought into question by the fact that I already collected all the batteries in the Atlantis level. This level is the most spacious in the game, has the largest file size, and you guessed it, contains the largest amount of batteries. So let's try completing the mini golf level in bonus roundup mode. The mini golf level has more batteries than the warehouse level, which we're going to swap it with later. The mini golf level contains 106 batteries, which I'm going to be collecting and collecting the most of off camera. Meanwhile, let's check out some other things. I've tried swapping the names of each level with level 0. Each time I started the game, the camera spawned in a completely random place, and the music played for a few seconds and then stopped. I also tried swapping each level with level 1. While I was doing that, I started the car park level and came across this weird glitch where I just fell through the roof of this parking garage, and just happened to land on the scaffolding on the ceiling of the room below. I did fall shortly after that, but that was pretty interesting. It's also interesting that there's collision on the top surfaces of the scaffolding. I also found that you can go on top of the buildings outside the level's enclosure. This is pretty easy if you have the following power-ups. Nitro, Super Jump, Anti-Gravity, and Mega Health. Once you're on top of these buildings with the edges on the roofs, you see that the surface of the inside of this edge of each one is not there and does not have any collision. I found the same thing on the roofs of these two buildings you see here. I also found that you can climb up pretty much any wall or steep incline in this game, which is really strange. And because these edges don't have collision, you can just drive through them. Now let's check behind the buildings and see if there's any collision or surface. Nope. The developers somehow didn't expect us to get over the gate, when it's clearly pretty easy to do that. Okay, let's try straight up climbing these two buildings. quickly change the camera angle for you guys, and the top of the building isn't there, apparently. Now let's try climbing this other one in first person view. It just doesn't work apparently. I also want to say the shadows of these two buildings look pretty weird because the tops of the buildings aren't there. So this side is there, but this one's not. And if you want to go back to the course, just drive right back through the enclosure because the other side just isn't there. Let's check out a couple more of these buildings here. Of course, this isn't going to have a back to it. And let's check out these poles of this building. These pillars here. They're actually slightly airborne, which is and very interesting. And of course, they're not going to have any service to them. And when you drive in behind them, you're just stuck there until you reset the car. I find it makes sense also that tops of the many of the buildings that are shorter are there. And of course the roofs of these two buildings are going to be there, but not the backs of them because the developers just didn't put it there, they didn't expect people to see them. And the inside surfaces of these little sort of doorways aren't there because they're behind both of the buildings. And it would also make for a pretty good challenge to me to climb both of the buildings, so let's do that. So when the building narrows out, these 
surfaces are actually there, which is surprising to me actually because we're already pretty high up. So we're on top of the building now, and it seems like the collision is there because these surfaces are angled. Interesting. The sides are also there because the buildings are spaced far enough apart that they need to be there. And remember, this applies to all three of the buildings because apparently all three are identical. And also, when I jumped off here, I just happened to land here. And this building is also slightly airborne, so I'm going to have to jump to it to actually get to the top of it. So the side of this chimney that's next to the wall isn't there. So the front and sides of these things are there, but the backs and tops aren't. Also, if the tops of whatever these are aren't there, then why are these there? Yeah, this game's weird. If the developers of this game didn't want us to get over the gate, why didn't they make it taller in the first place? But maybe they didn't want us to get over the gate. Also, they made the background so stunning, but we never get to see it. So disappointing. Then I was playing the rooftop level, and saw that there were buildings outside that level's enclosure as well. So I tried jumping over the gate, and this is what happened. There is no collision outside the gate. The buildings are purely visual. Okay, back to playing the mini golf stage in bonus roundup mode. We've completed the level as you can see here. Now, let's swap the mini golf level with the warehouse level by swapping level 5 with level 6. Now, let's test our theory by starting the warehouse level, which is technically the mini golf level. Nope, we don't fall through the world. Although I did experience this weird this here and again off camera when I fell through a wooden track. This could be a total coincidence, or it could be because of what I did. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, please like it, share, subscribe for more content, and comment below. Also, you can check out my channel by clicking on my channel name. I have more videos you can check out. I also have a Pinterest account, so I'll add that to my upload default and it will be linked in the description as well. And as always, thanks for watching.